Thank you very much for inviting me. I think this is really a fruitful and enriching workshop. I mean, and uh, the whole program, I mean, uh, I'm very happy to be part of it. Well, uh, everything is on the first slide, right? Uh, almost, I mean. Uh, uh, it's, uh, some speakers before me said that they, they gave that lecture before, but I never gave this lecture before. And in fact, I never joined these two things. Whenever I spoke about the Ramsey questions, I, I, I never uh, spoke about the, about the sparsity and vice versa. And, uh, and this is as well then indicating that by the strange order of, of, uh, of the people which I'm listing as, uh, uh, as co-authors, uh, because it's not alphabetical, as is usual in mathematics. I mean, I never understood why these physicists have to change or uh, to randomly permute the, uh, the order of authors. And, uh, and so this is not uh, that I would say that I like Patrice Osenam so much that, uh, that he should be before David Evans or Jan Hubička, but it's uh, sort of in the order how the lecture will be. So I will start first speaking about the sparsity, and this is basically what we were developing with, uh, with Patrice, and then I will speak about this Ramsey classes, which, uh, which we then were uh, things doing with uh, uh, Jan Hubička and, and lately by David Evans. <coughs> And uh, um, so let's start with uh, sparsity. People still uh, ask me what are, what are these uh, stupid nowhere dense classes. So let's start with the uh, 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 definition of it. We'll have a, the lecture will have a three parts. I will speak about the sparsity and stability, basically explaining this uh, uh, stability context. The, then about the uh, Ramsey classes for uh, for models, I mean, including the, uh, explaining the difficulty and uh, significance of having Ramsey theorem for both the relations and, and uh, functions or operations. And I will finish by uh, some comments on the whole thing about the universality. So what are, what are these uh, 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 nowhere dense classes? I mean, so these are classes of graphs, although one can, I think this is most important it's, uh, for graphs. I mean, they can be defined uh, uh, for, uh, for relation structures too, for example, uh, using Geifman's uh, graph. But uh, I mean, this is not yet, I think, uh, well understood, and it still will uh, come, uh, come uh, into, uh, there will be some refinements, which uh, I think will be, uh, will be still uh, important. So we say that we defined it negatively. Okay? The class of finite graphs is uh, somewhere dense, so it's not nowhere dense. If, uh, if for some uh, positive integer, uh, every graph is uh, uh, what's called the D shallow, which we define D shallow minor of a graph in C. Mm -hmm. So for any G, there exists H in our class, so that uh, the H is, uh, is, uh, is uh, the G can be a shallow minor of the, of the graph uh, in the class. Now, what, what is the shallow minor? Uh, the shallow minor is basically that you are allowed to, to contract uh, small pieces. A small piece means that it has a small radius. The radius says that uh, it's a graph which is in some fixed uh, or the d uh, uh, <laughs> shallow uh, the d shallow minor means that these pieces which you are contracting are all contained in the balls which have a fixed uh, or uh, fixed or bounded radius radius bounded by d. So it's uh, formulated there. Uh, I think uh, uh, I think uh, exhaustively. Yeah. Well, it's easy to define it, but to understand somehow the dynamics of it or understand uh, what, uh, what it really means, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is still ongoing, uh, ongoing project, and we, we are having more and more information. And, and uh, uh, so uh, here is a picture, I mean, of it, I, mean, I should uh, uh, comment later on. So here is a picture indicating it, I mean, so... Uh, 
There is something to say. If the, we are measuring this distance, we are measuring in the subgraph, not in the graph itself. I mean, this is uh, one, one comment. The another comment is that we keep the graph is simple because we want to speak about the uh, sparse graphs. So we, if there ever uh, somehow more edges between the pieces uh, after which we are contracted, we just keep one. So <coughs> and uh, so this is indicated on the. On the, on the on the top top picture. Of course, I mean, if you uh, the graph may be very sparse. For example, lattice. I mean, if you contract small piece, I mean, you get a high degree indicated in the min. So all graphs are simple, <laughs> simple. And then we say that something is nowhere dense uh, if there is a negation of it. I mean, so so it's a, something is nowhere dense equivalently if for every fixed d. This is this radius. There is always a graph which you cannot get in this in this in this way, which you cannot get by contracting uh, these uh, pieces of uh, of the of the bounded radius. <laughs> so if you denote by by the Gina Bladi, this is uh, by now standard notation of it. So uh, uh, the, uh, if you denote by Gina Bladi the the class of all graphs which you get from C as these uh, shallow minors. Uh, then the condition for this nowhere dense is that this class, C Navladi, is a proper, sub, a proper subclass of all the graphs. Yeah. And, uh, and you get uh, this certain hierarchy there in, in it, I mean, which uh, I was explaining, I think, in detail last week. So you have the graph C, and then you, from it, you take a C, C Nabla zero, which is just a monotone, and you take a larger one, C Nabla. One and, and so it, it's uh, just like uh, evolution in the time. I mean, and, and this is important actually because I mean you just you are able to you get certain parameter. <laughs> it's a called parameter uh, that is uh, related to parameterized complexity, and these classes I mean are somehow simpler <coughs> because they were uh, created by local transformation of the of the uh, of the original graph. I mean. So there we, we wrote, a, it's a part, it's a commercial break. I mean, we wrote a, wrote a book about it some time ago, but there we should, it was a quite fast development and there should be a second, second edition or revised edition appearing soon. So what are the examples? <coughs> so examples of, of it are uh, simple ones, I mean. So, for example, trees, graph trees, um, you know, planar graphs. More generally, if, if you take any class of graphs which is closed on minors, I mean, and you don't restrict, uh, you, there was a shallow minor, so there is no shallow, if you don't restrict these radiuses, uh, you have a notion of the minor. So, I mean, uh, if you take any class of graphs which is closed on minors, then, uh, then this is an uh, example. And this is important example, and it was a motivation in a certain sense at the, at the beginning, uh, or one of the motivations said it be at the beginning, uh, because these are this is a whole area, very successful area of particle, both from structural and and the algorithmic point of view, of the so-called structural graph theory, uh, developed by Robertson, Seymour, and Thomas, and and, and other. So this is in If you take the class of graphs, which are defined but not containing, not containing uh, uh, fixed minor, <coughs> then this is uh, this is an uh, example of the nowhere dense class. Yeah. <coughs> so particularly, these are all the uh, and essentially the structural theorem is saying that this is this is related to uh, to it. Uh, these are sort of the geometry graphs. I mean graphs on surfaces. I mean uh, modifications of the graphs on surfaces. I mean these are uh, these are the proper minor closed class. But not only that. I mean you take a class of graphs which have a bounded degree. I mean so, I mean and this is very much non-geometrical because any any graph. Can be get, you can get by contracting graph which has a degree three bounded by degree three or cubic graph. You just these big vertices you you split you split into some uh, some binary trees and uh, and then you contract them. Yeah. So so it, it's a so class of graphs which have all degrees bounded by a fixed number. I mean 
Another is what, what we call one line, it's a quake, quasi planar graph. So this is different what, uh, what uh, Janos was speaking about planar graphs because he was, he was speaking about the intersection of the, uh, that you don't have the uh, K lines which are mutually intersecting. This, is, this, this notion is that every line is intersected by at most K other ones. I mean, so this is as well, as, as well, as well, this class of uh, snowbird dance. And then there are crazy examples, I mean crazy, I mean uh, nice examples, I mean, and uh, these I uh, propose to call them Eddish classes. And, and one of them is, for example, that you take, a, you take increasing sequence of graphs which have, a, one has to say, paradoxical properties, right? I mean, uh, they, have a, they have all, uh, well, bounded, uh, they have uh, uh, some maximum degree, this delta is a maximum degree, yeah. <coughs> And you assume that the Gers shortest cycle in the graph is a, is a bigger than than the than the than the maximum degree. So good, they are regular, so all degrees are the same. So the so the Gers is bigger than the uh, than, than the degree. That's a non-trivial condition by itself. I mean, so that's uh, the, and. Uh, I mean, if you are uh, if you want uh, really the Gers, say if you if you don't work with the trees. And, and you want to have an even high chromatic number of it, I mean. And uh, if uh, Alex Lubotsky is uh, present, he's, uh, he knows very well how difficult it is to uh, construct examples of uh, just a single examples of such, uh, such, a, such a graphs. And Erdes uh, proved, uh, proved by probabilistic method a long time ago that they exist, but the construction is, is, a, is a very difficult. These are, these are called Ramanujan graphs. <coughs> well, a, a one example of them. And this is this is snowbird dance class, right? I mean, why it is snowbird dance? I mean, so it's a, if you contract, uh, you have this large curves, right? So if you contract uh, small radiuses, uh, we, because the girls is large, you don't produce a triangle, for example. So, so graphs which have which contain a triangle for a give, for every given radius have a bounded size, right? So they cannot. You always are missing something. For any d, you are missing something. I mean. For example, large, large uh, graph is a, with, a, with, a, with a triangle, and uh, still the, the graph is. So all these uh, examples are under one roof, under under one umbrella, and still one can study it. I mean, and one can prove uh, many. And this is thanks to various. Uh, uh, characterizations of it, and in particular, it's related to the, to the sparsity. Why sparsity? It's just not clear at all at the beginning why, why, this, uh, why, why such a graph should be sparse. But there is an equivalent characterization of it. I mean, and this, uh, they have almost linearly many edges, this, uh, this graph. So the so number of edges is bounded by the, by the <coughs> almost linear power of the of the vertices. So if you uh, want to write it a little bit, a little bit more, a uh, uh, little bit more uh, uh, somehow uh, formally, uh, then if you denote the, the maximum average uh, degree of such uh, shallow minors of the of the graph G, I mean, for just locally for the for the graph G, uh, then the class is nowhere dense if and only if this. Uh, Logarithmic density of this uh, this uh, edge density, this number D is uh, like uh, edge density. If the it's uh, if this uh, logarithmic density of this uh, edge density is is is, uh, is a zero. So I mean, the, in other words, I mean this is number of edges is bounded by number of vertices to the one plus little o one, which is which is over there. And that takes some work to prove. I mean, that's a fine combinatorics, fine, fine, uh, fine graph theory. I mean, it's basically uh, saying uh, this is refinement of the, the saying that uh, if a graph is dense, then it contains a big minor. I mean, so which is, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, you have to improve it to the uh, to this shallow, shallow, uh, uh, shallow version of it. Yeah, and and. Uh, but it's, it's uh, not not end of the story, and maybe the somehow the most surprising thing of this uh, uh, is that in about how stable is this notion in many in how many different ways one can one can characterize 
not as something similar. Exactly the same thing. I mean, so it's a, there's a, this notion of this, this dividing dichotomy, if you want, between the nowhere dance and somewhere dance uh, is uh, is uh, is very very stable under under in the various uh, definitions or interpretations. I mean, if you want, some. So, the, for example, here is an example. Yeah. So. So it's the same, exactly the same dividing line between the sum variance. You get if you speak uh, if you speak about a shallow uh, topological minor. And shallow topological minor, topological minor is something what is even more simple than the uh, than the uh, than the definition of the shallow minor. You just speak about the subdivision. You have a graph, and you subdivide every 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 edge by boundedly many times by the, at most d points. And, uh, and if this graph belongs to, to your class, then you say that it belongs to, uh, to, to this derived graph. So this C, uh, this is nabla with the tilde, uh, D is the class of all graphs which can be subdivided in this bounded way, at most D points per H, so that you get a subgraph in, in, your, in, in your class. And it's the same thing. And that's a surprising thing, at the, or it was a surprising thing, some time ago, because these uh, these two uh, directions of the somehow study of the minors and these topological minors are very different. I mean, and for example, the one of the most f fundamental, uh, beautiful results of the structural graph theory is that uh, that uh, this uh, uh, quasi order quasi-order uh, given by the minor relation is well quasi-ordering, so uh, you will not find infinite anti-chain in this, in, this, in this order. It's a difficult theorem, even after all the improvements. Uh, uh, and, uh, and this is deeply not true for, uh, for these topological minors. Yeah. And see the example, you take, uh, you take a cycle and uh, you, you just double every edge. Uh, you can sort of double cycle, and then they are they are in, incomparable. This is incomparable set uh, of uh, of uh, graphs with uh, with, uh, with respect to this uh, topologic. Topo Still, I mean, in the sense, if you restrict it in this, if you parameterize it by these lines, you get the same, you get the you get the you get the same thing. Yeah. And uh, there are. Uh, as Patrice likes to say, there are 72 characterizations of uh, nowhereness uh, and uh, somewhereness uh, uh, dichotomy. Uh, one of them, I mean, one of the related notions in it is a uh, notion of bounded expansion. And I will explain some of the role of it. It's interesting. Bounded expansion is something, something which is particle. It's a subset uh, of the every bounded expansion class is nowhereness class. And that's why. Uh, because I mean, there was this condition that uh, this logarithmic density of these uh, these uh, edge densities is uh, is uh, is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is finite. But if if you know that I mean, the, even this uh, this uh, the every of these classes uh, uh, has uh, at a given depth has a, has a, this. Uh, 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 edge density is bounded by absolute constant, and of course it, uh, it as well from that follows that it is nowhere dense, so but this is assumption. So I mean the bounded expansion is, uh, again, bounded expansion class is that for every depth, you know that the class of the graphs is degenerated, so it means it can be ordered in such a way that the edges to the left, are the number of edges to the left is bounded by, by some fixed, uh, fixed uh, Fixed number, some some fixed number. It may grow. I mean, it may grow arbitrarily. It's easy to get. I mean, it is, it, this FD may grow arbitrarily, but it still it is a, it's a function. For example, for cubic graphs, it grows uh, a quadratic <coughs> uh, exponentially. Yeah. And here, are, for example, a sample or just to get you the feeling, what uh, what uh, which things are are related. I will not. Uh, uh, not explain them in the detail because that would take me th through the whole lecture, and uh, part of it I was doing last week uh, at, uh, at the course. <laughs> yeah. And but I will just say you uh, just uh, optically just have a look and with some combinatory experience. This is this is really striking because basically every every parameter which you which you which you studied. 
uh, in uh, in combinatorics, which is related to graphs, or is, is actually relevant to it. It can be turned to something what is uh, uh, and for example, I mean this. Uh, uh, the feeling is that if the graph is explaining to say a few words about number five, yeah, about uh, this quasi, which is in, which is well, uh, not all these, not all these uh, parameters are of the same importance, but uh, but uh, well, some of them are related, of course. But I mean, this one is uh, I think important together with, for example, with chromatic, with the number six, with the chromatic number. So what is alpha? What is uh, what is uh, five? Five means. Well, the, some of the uh, feeling, <coughs> it's a nature, right? So feeling is that if the graph is sparse, then, uh, then it, has to, it should contain a large independent set, right? Uh, and um, it, of course, cannot be a characterization because, I mean, you can always add, add to dense graph something and you get an indep independent set. Uh, it's not like independent in the context of stability, but it's independent means that set of points that there are no edges on it. Yeah. <coughs> and, uh, but let's modify it a little bit. I mean, so maybe something is true that it should be done. Hereditary, it should hold for, uh, for, uh, for subgraphs. So that is the, somehow destroying, destroying, uh, destroying this uh, uh, this example with uh, adding something to it, and let's modify it in the way that uh, that if if the graph is sparse, then it should contain a lot of points which are far away, which are which are at the given distance, at the given distance at most bigger than uh, some number of d, yeah. and uh, it. Is it somehow the characterizing the, the sparsity? And the answer is no. I mean, because uh, because for example, if you take a tree, I mean a star, uh, then uh, then it uh, contains, of course, independence, uh, but it doesn't contain two independence uh, because uh, I mean the, the, all these leaves are at the distance two. But you can delete one point and you kill it at uh, all the distance. And that's exactly the the formulation. This, uh, I mean the. Uh, the equivalent formulation to know where there is it is that I mean that it's uh, if you if you find uh, that if you fix a distance d and uh, then there exists some fixed number fixed number as depending on d as d so that the following is true if the graph is huge then you can delete at most as d points and you will find many points or given number of points which are at the at the distance at the distance d. And that's what's called quasi-wide. It was dis uh, discovered in different contexts, and it's equivalent, as we showed it. It's equivalent with the, with the nowhere density. Yeah. And then there are alpha, then there is um, uh, he, he is chromatic number. It's a partitioning. It's a dual notion, right? You want to, I mean, uh, you can split the, the graph in few classes, not in fixed number, n to, uh, the, n to epsilon. You can in fix, fixed classes, which have the property that they are this uh, coloring, and if for any two classes, it is as well very union of what you will find in two chromatic, it's very easy. What you find on three colors, it's very easy. And this very easy, you have to define. It's related to, to the three depths. And, uh, but this axiomatization of the process, which is again equivalent to it. We see density, I mean, the neighborhood complexity, Model checking, I mean, of the deciding for a given structure whether, whether, whether a formula is uh, satisfied. I mean, this is almost linear algorithm for it, algorithmic problem. By counting, counting a number of homomorphism, counting of subgraphs in, in a given graph. Uh, this is, these are even some more exotic things like a category. Uh, there are some category questions which are related to it. All this is equivalent, just the same. Same notion. Right. There was many people that I listed, many people which contributed to it, which were using this quite popular, particularly in the line of algorithms. I mean, these no-variance classes, basically the, all the basic questions have almost linear algorithms for them. I mean, with some huge constants, I mean, and with some, it's a, it's a, and including these parameters, I mean, including this, uh, where are you in this, uh, in the hierarchy of these classes. 
So I mean, let me say a few words. I, I, I said that there are these two. Uh, there is this no variance class, there is a dichotomy no variance and some variance, and the subclass of this uh, is a bounded expansion where, where, the, where the degrees for every, in every moment, in every time, they, it's bounded by some function of the. What's the difference between them? That's very, it's very, very pleasing, pleasing. I mean, the bounded expansion classes. That is, these parameters tend to be bounded. I mean, uh, this, for example, this partitioning uh, characterization for the chromatic number, chroma, p chromatic number, I mean, bounded uh, uh, edge density. Uh, <coughs> If they are linear algorithms. This is a tip, this is a domain of the bounded expansion. On the other hand side, in lower dense, it's not bounded. You, 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 you get it uh, almost linear. I mean, uh, instead of bounded, you get almost linear. Uh, in the n to one plus epsilon, uh, <coughs> o, o one. I mean, the, uh, if it is uh, almost, there are almost linear algorithms. Almost, li almost linear. Uh, this uh, average, uh, uh, average edge density. And so, what are the classes of graphs which are belonging to the difference? Well, this, what are these no variance versus uh, bounded expansion classes? Well, these are these edge classes. I mean, these are the classes of graphs which have unbounded he, which have unbounded chromatic number, but uh, uh, but they they have a they don't have a large clique. An overdense means that they don't contain big complete graph, they don't contain subdivision, shallow subdivision. This is one of the characters, shallow subdivision of the complete graph. But on the other hand side, they don't belong to bounded expansion, so their chromatic number is, uh, is unbounded. And not only it's unbounded, and all these derived chromatic numbers are uh, unbounded too. And it is a classical, uh, classical setting of the, of the high chromatic graphs which don't contain uh, 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 given configuration, particularly, for example, which don't contain any short cycles, I mean, which is, uh, <coughs> which is a classical topic of Ferdesh, I mean, or establishing. So this is, uh, these are, uh, these examples are relevant. So that example which I showed before, I mean, this, uh, High gears, uh, small degree. I mean, uh, high chromatic number uh, examples uh, uh, are relevant. Or uh, uh, let's say it, uh, it's like an extreme case for for the, uh, for, uh, for 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 the, for this difference of the classes. Uh, so how is it related to uh, to, to to logic and its uh, that I want to say on the two slides, and there is some recent uh, development in it. Mm. So, the, so for the purpose of it, we say that the class of uh, finite graphs is stable if if there is no formula which is uh, which is uh, uh, representing uh, in those graphs uh, 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 half graph. So it's uh, there is no phi. I rotate. And rate uh, exactly. There are no no fee which would represent uh, represent the half graph of unbounded size in the in the in the in the class. Now the there is a easy it's observation almost. Well, it's not observation. It's a, it was proved by uh, it's observation that Podevsky and Ziegler prove it. I mean, so the, it's a uh, Podevsky and Ziegler in the in the early times of the stability in 70, 78, and they proved that so-called superflat graphs are, are, are stable. And the superflat graphs were defined exactly like, uh, like one of the characterization of, of no dense. That one was topological, topological minors. They were defined that they don't contain uh, for any D, they don't contain uh, unbounded uh, complete graph which, uh, which is uh, where every edge is subdivided D times. If you apply Ramsey theorem, you can make it uniform with uh, at most D where it becomes exactly D or D prime smaller than D. And so these two notions coincide, in this form which they coincide, and they prove that they are stable. It's such a, I mean, they were speaking about one countable graph. I mean, uh, this is uh, 
it's a, I mean, modulo, uh, uh, either ultra filter or by direct construction uh, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, is, uh, is the same thing. On the other hand side, if you have a, uh, if you have a stable graph and you know that it's monotone, and it's uh, closed on subgraphs, and, and it, if it is somewhere dense, then you have the comp subdivision of these complete graphs. Well, then you can, you have a, you can represent by a formula which, uh, which, uh, which doesn't contain long vectors, only, only those which are bounded by, by the size of the subdivision. Uh, you can represent not only half graph, you can represent any graph, I mean, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in, in it. Um, so I mean, if you, in this sense, if you, if you, if you speak about the classes of graphs which are monotone, which is a natural combinatory assumption, it's not so much uh, natural in the in the in the model theoretic sense. I mean, and I will say a few words about it uh, in a in a in a second. But I mean, if you speak about the monotone classes, then then these two notions are exactly the same. I mean, so. Uh, if you speak about graphs, I mean, yeah. in the language of graphs, again, it, is, it is the same. And there is a new development to it. It's a, the advantage of it, I mean, this is, uh, this is as I said, I mean, Poleski and Ziegler, it's a <laughs> model theory paper, it's about, uh, about infinite graph, I mean, they don't somehow, uh, uh, it's not clear there are no bounds on it, it's just, uh, 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 just they just prove what is, what is, what is on the slide. But I mean, there is, uh, on the other hand side, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, no evidence classes are defined in, uh, from below. They are defined in a finite way. And then there is a finite way, which uh, recently, uh, it's a very nice uh, preprint by an archive by Philip Chuk Sieberts and uh, Toruncik, who is uh, Shimon is present here, uh, which, uh, which provide finite proof of the, of the, of the, of the theorem. And it basically it says, it's just going in the, how does it behave going in this hierarchy? I mean, so if you assume that a given graph is, is not containing shallow minor at, uh, at a fixed depth, denoted by GQ, then, and if phi is a formula which has a bounded quantifier rank and doesn't contain too many, too many variables, then you know that the, in the graph uh, you will you will not find uh, you will not find a half graph of uh, of a given given size bounded by some uh, by this function uh, and these functions are explicit they are not big polynomial exponential uh, yeah but the proof is complicated it's using uh, several of these uh, <laughs> I think maybe two or three, uh, several of these uh, reformulations. I mean, particularly it is related to this uh, quasi-wideness, which I, which I was uh, uh, explaining uh, in, some, in some detail. And it, there is no compactness there. It's a finite, uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, uh, one of the ingredients is, uh, is uh, uh, Geifman, Geifman locality. I think there is some more to it uh, to then going in this, uh, in this uh, uh, direction. So I think there is a model theoretic uh, setting uh, to be discovered, actually, the model theoretic setting of, of, other, uh, of, uh, of other of these uh, uh, character characterization. I'm sure they, it's a quite exciting uh, uh, project. Uh, the other side which is, uh, which is, uh, which is interesting is to speak about this, uh, how, what is the role of this monotonicity? Yeah. And that, f that we are investigating quite intensively. I mean, and uh, I mean, if, because, okay, uh, uh, monotonicity means, you know, the, the sparse graph, if the graph is sparse, then it has a few edges, but, uh, but you want, uh, 
uh, you, uh, you are speaking about how tame it is, I mean, or it's a shellac project, right? How tame it is. But if you take the complement, it's as well tame, right? So it's uh, just the interpretation of the, of the, of the same graph. Uh, and this is, of course, dense graph, so I mean. So, so if you speak about the interpretations, actually one can, one can, one can characterize interpretations of, of these bounded expansion classes in terms of uh, some tree-derived uh, graphs. Uh, this, uh, it's called uh, sh bounded shrub depths, but uh, I will not speak about it. And uh, it's, a, it's a work in progress. If you want to hear about it, uh, Shimon will have a lecture, he told me, on Friday at the, at the Diderot in, here in Paris. <laughs> so let me say something as the time is running. I think I'm just in the, in the uh, It's uh, about this Ramsey. <coughs> In fact, I mean, as you will see, this is, uh, I was thinking all this lecture is like a blend of two things which don't belong to together. But I mean, it's a, in the, uh, it's, there is a, uh, uh, in team, I would say, a relationship actually to the lecture of Pierre, which was before. It's uh, trying to get together omega categoricity with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, stability. Um, so, so we are speaking about the stability, about the sparse, no valence classes. Now we speak about Ramsey, Ramsey theory. Uh, and uh, this is just a rough schema. I mean, it's, uh, of course, Ramsey theory was always related to, to, <laughs> to, uh, to logic or model theory. Look at his paper uh, from, from, from 1930. It's uh, called, uh, you know, uh, on, the, on the foundation of, of the... Uh, it's uh, it's related to this uh, the decision problem or in childhood problem of the, of the arithmetic and uh, so I mean the, um, let me start with a definition uh, yeah. it's about a key, key notion in this is a uh, is a notion of Ramsey class I mean so if you if you have a class a quite general class of structures where you know what's a subobject. <coughs> It may, may be represented typically by embeddings, I mean. So if for uh, A, B, and uh, for two objects, you then know B to say, as a co combination number, of all subobjects which are isomorphic to A. And you say that uh, the class is A Ramsey, and it's, uh, if, if the following holds, if for every graph in the B, in the, in the class, denoted by B, there exists uh, uh, there is uh, object, not graph, uh, object in C in the class where so that C arose uh, B uh, with parameters A and K. And this is a dash partition arrow, which means the usual uh, condition uh, appearing in the Ramsey theorem if you split, split in the set manner. In arbitrary way, if there was some underlying structure on the C, you forget it. I mean, you just take a set partition of the of the set of all subjects which are isomorphic to A. Then there exists a given object B prime, which is isomorphic to B, so that which is homogeneous, and which is all the A subobjects. And if the class has uh, a Ramsey property for every A, then you take it is Ramsey class so that the K K is Ramsey. In combinatorics, I mean, it's good to isolate this A because it's, uh, uh, it's uh, sharply matters on the A is a difficult parameter. I mean, so I mean, it's a huge difference between if A is one point, it's usually called a pigeonhole or a Folkman, or then you have a many general theorems, and if A becomes just a modest, I mean, like two points, like an edge, then it became, became already already much more interesting and difficult and, and uh, there are problems. I mean, uh, uh, <coughs> Drew was speaking about the difficult questions about the bo bounding of these, uh, uh, these, para these sizes of these Ramsey objects. I'm not speaking about the bounding uh, sizes, I'm speaking about the existence. I would like to know when, when the, when the K, K has the property. There is a, uh, uh, Important difference, say, between usual formulation of Ramsey. Then here we are satisfied that there exists one C. I mean, we don't claim that all the large Cs uh, have this property. That would be too narrow. Too, too narrow. <coughs> yeah. And somehow this crystallized uh, 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 and uh, some 
Uh, I will not say when, so that the younger people in the audience wouldn't be embarrassed, you know. And uh, uh, there are classical examples of, uh, of it are, uh, say, Lino Hodder, simplicial category. I mean, if you want, then uh, table data, this is a Ramsey theorem. They are finite sets, probably this inclusion, this is as well a Ramsey theorem. Complete graphs with uh, subgraph, this is as well a Ramsey, a Ramsey theorem. Yeah. Not van der Waarden theorem, for example. Van der Waarden theorem is, uh, from this point of view, pigeon hole principle speaks about the coloring of numbers, about the points. It's easy to find that you cannot uh, color two element points, but there is axiomatization of it. I mean, it's a so called parameter sets, and key uh, ingredients is uh, Hill's Jubert theorem, or something like a cube lemma, uh, which, uh, which is. Uh, which is one of the most useful uh, uh, statement or uh, results, which is applied again and again in this structure, Ramsey. And the same about uh, for the expert, not the Radio theorem, which speaks about the generalization of Schur theorem, but there is axiomatization, so-called MPC sets, and for them, it, it, this is this is then the this is then the Ramsey class. I mean, and. Uh, and the basic building block for it, or the line of research I am saying, is the, or in the model theory setting, is the, is the theorem that in the full generality for the relation language, the class of all finite ordered, I mean, so you put some ordering on the, on the, on the you consider structures which, have a, which are linear ordered, which are sitting on the, uh, on uh, segments of in, on integer, for example. Uh, so the class of uh, uh, all finite ordered L structures for any given L is, uh, is Ramsey, uh, Ramsey, Ramsey class. I mean, so it's ordering is the right. I mean, uh, quite uh, recently uh, we generalize it to, to, the, to the structures with, uh, with the functions and uh, for finite models. So if we have a, so I mean, the, it's, a, it's the same theorem, right? So the class of all, all ordered L structures, and here you have uh, the class of all linear ordered L structures, that's the same thing, right? But the language is different, right? In the language you allow, uh, you allow the, uh, the uh, functions, operations, of any arities, I mean, so that's, uh, if, you have a, if you have structures and you have a binary and ternary uh, operations on it, uh, and no, no axioms, I mean, so just, uh, just the structures in that language, then, uh, then you, can, you can produce. Uh, uh, produce uh, uh. And that, that is, that is uh, more complicated than it seems on the first glance, uh, uh, because, I mean, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 the, the fact that you are allowing uh, uh, functions it's leading that uh, you have to preserve some closures. I mean, so you have to preserve that uh, that uh, embeddings have to that follows from the last condition. Embeddings uh, follow the if something uh, uh, have to have to preserve the whole thing. So I mean, if we, this if this is a, a subset, then no function can uh, no function can go out. I mean, you, you have to go uh, uh, have to go. Inside and uh, so so this is uh, difficult. Uh, it can be f equivalently formulated in in the in as what we actually do to make it more handy uh, in terms of closure. Uh, uh, and oh, that's a new trick. I mean, that's an empty empty page. Uh, well. I <laughs> <laughs> and. Well, in art you can exhibit uh, just, uh, just uh, monochromatic paintings. So why, why not in, in mathematics? Uh, well, uh, no, I didn't do it intentionally. Just a mistake. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, um, but maybe I, I would uh, use uh, this empty page to explain something. I mean, if you <laughs> if you have a class K, which is uh, which is Ramsey. Then, then this fact being Kramsey class, it's deeply not hereditary, right? I mean, if you have a, then you take a subclass. This is not one these are these are all graphs, right? This is a class picture of the class, and take a subclass, a K prime, yeah. 
I mean, it doesn't follow that uh, k prime is uh, Ramsey 2, by far not. But what do you know? You fix A, you fix B, yeah. and then you are looking for C. And you know that there exists C. C is somewhere here, right? And the C has the property that if you color blah, 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 you get, uh, get monochromatic B. But the C is outside, that's you are not, a, you, you want to get it inside, right? But this has very special properties, I mean, maybe. Uh, and uh, so this is, the, this is complicated, and in fact, this is the way how one is doing it. Uh, I mean, one K is proving that you will find, say, if you have it here, you will have it here, if you have it here, you will have it here, and you are somehow jumping, I mean, trying to jump back back to the k and this is sort of like a strategy strategy of the of the of the proof uh, and uh, and uh, i mean i wanted to please peter kivash but he maybe he didn't arrive yet so i listed uh, listed one corollary of this of the of this uh, theorem about the about the finite models so the ramsey theory for Ramsey classes of finite models, or the fact that all, all uh, finite models of, uh, over the given, given language uh, form a Ramsey class. And it is that the Steiner system has, uh, are a Ramsey, ra Ramsey, uh, uh, Ramsey class. And uh, here is an outline of the, of the, very brief outline of the, of the proof. I mean, so. I, I mean, what is the Steiner system? I mean, Steiner system is uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, coming from Steiner triple systems. I mean, and this is uh, here is you have an example. It's a, it's something like a geometry or pre-geometry. So that's a that's a projective uh, plane of of the two. You know, so this is family of seven triples representing by line. This is as well a line. Uh, which have the property that every, every pair is in one triple, every pair is exactly in one triple. Yeah? So every pair is in one line. You generalize it for, for, a, P, for a P tuple. Yeah. <coughs> and, uh, and then uh, this are Steiner system, you may as well uh, define not uh, for a pair, the exist uh, existence of this, uh, uh, this uh, these objects is a, is a complicated. They are uh, they, they go by different names. In in a, they started in the designing of experiments, you know, by by Fisher, but they are called block designs. And so on. But I mean, here is uh, just uh, these are Steiner systems. I mean, they may as well be defined by the, the not any pair uh, is uh, the, in one 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 p tuple, but any. T tuple is in one T tuple, and that's exactly what Peter Kivash solved. Uh, their existence was wide open for 100 years. They exist by now, as we know. And, and, uh, and uh, we know that it is Ramsey. I mean, why it is Ramsey? Because we can uh, deduce it from the previous theorem. We, uh, that's why I stick only to two, just to make it simple. For any two points, uh, we have operation, which is, uh, which is uh, these two points go to the, to the third one, so the, <coughs> or, uh, or uh, define, define the line, and uh, so define the p-tuple, so that we view as operation, and that we can use the Ramsey theorem for mine and more as well. It's not completely true. We have to somehow observe that in the constructions we, we don't disturb. There are some little axioms which are, uh, which, which are, uh, for, for which, uh, for which, uh, no, which holds for, uh, for, uh, for this interpretation uh, by functions, but uh, they can be satisfied in the, in the process of proving this finite model. You, you produce something what is a partial, uh, partial, Steiner system, and then there is a deep, deep theorem again, which is saying that you can complete it in the, in the, in the, in the full, full Steiner, Steiner system. So it's a, I mean, byproduct of uh, two, two non-trivial, non-trivial, non-trivial results, and it uh, can be generalized in many, uh, many, uh, many, many ways. I mean, uh, it's a paper for it. Now the. I have 10 more minutes, or eight minutes, seven? No, I just finished. <laughs> Normally you finish, but you can 
Okay. Um, well, I think I, I have. I mean, that's. A, it's a little bit paradoxical if you view it uh, in, the, in the first glance. I mean, it's a, if you want to, if you want to, to have something Ramsey, it has to be rigid, right? You have to. You, you, in fact, you have to put the ordering there. That's, uh, that was sketched uh, yesterday by by David Evans. There is a naturally existing in the in the the, uh, the ordering. On the other hand side, the whole class has to come from super homogeneous, ultra homogeneous structure. And this is uh, uh, defined by this, uh, by the general schema. If there is a Ramsey class, then it has some amalgamation. It's amalgamation class, it has amalgamation. What, what you can deduce from Ramsey class? Nothing, right? I mean, you just know that there's some mysterious chromatic number is large, that they, or some coloring is large, but from that you may deduce that it has amalgamation property. That's a key property, because if it has amalgamation property, and it's a, if it is amal it's amalgamation class, then it has a Fraser limit. Fraser limit is ultra homogeneous, uh, uh, ultra homogeneous structure, and I mean, the ultra homogeneous structures where uh, uh, are, there is a characterization project, I mean, of, the, of characterizing them. This is a classical model theory, model theory pattern. And if you happen to have such a characterization, then you may possibly turn it to, uh, to, Ramsey, to Ramsey class by adding something, by uh, some expansion. For example, adding ordering, maybe. Maybe, for example, in this uh, circular orders, you have to you have to select a point. I mean, you have to you have to do some 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 expansion, uh, which become which is usually easy, which for which uh, it becomes a Ramsey Ramsey class. And this is uh, this is a good project which was carried on for basically by for all. Classes which were the characterization of uh, ultra homogeneous structures, you know, for, particularly for undirected graphs. I mean, where you, you get that there are a few types of the, of the, of the, and basically they were all known before. I mean, so that's, a, then <coughs> and you can do it for, uh, for, and in general, I mean, in general, you have this, uh, this project which somehow looks, uh, looks uh, hopeful. I mean, which uh, somehow certainly is, uh, but the, the bottleneck is this K plus. What the K plus is, does, does it, can one modify the ultra homogeneous in a way, in a good way, keeping omega categoricity, for example, to the class which is, which is Ramsey? And this is not true. In general, I mean, as we know, uh, as was demonstrated yesterday by David in David's lecture, I mean, this is uh, this uh, cycle. It's a vicious cycle, so it, looks, so it may be, in some cases, that, uh, that uh, one cannot complete it, by, for example, by keeping omega categoricity. So there are more situations uh, in, a, and I'm sure that Hubichka and Freire will say, uh, say uh, that uh, these examples can be saved, in fact, that they produce Ramsey classes, but they are not omega categorical. Yeah. And so here are two theorems recent which are building on in this model theory, model theory line. And, uh, and if you, and which are positive, I mean, so, so if you have a language with relations and partial functions, and you know that, uh, that the class, in the class, you have amalgamation, but uh, your amalgamation is uh, free amalgamation. So, so you don't know anything about the class, only that this amalgamation is free in many instances. The, you know, the problem in the, in the characterization of ultra homogeneous is that this amalgamation is weak notion, right? The amalgamation of two triangles is the triangle itself. It's not what you think, it's amalgamation. So it's called uh, free amalgamation. So if you amalgam one triangle and one triangle with respect to, to the its edge, I mean, so for example, this is as well. Well, this is amalgamation too, right? You know, or, or even any any larger, larger, larger complete graph. But I mean, free amalgamation is this amalgamation. So, so if you have this free amalgamation, and just uh, then the full generally you know that this is a, this is a Ramsey class. I mean, and uh, 
and then there is uh, another about the homomorphism. And uh, and I think I prepare some <laughs> some something on the on the on the universe. So that of course is related to universal objects, you know, and which I'm sort of nicely uh, joining these uh, these two fields in in one of the uh, in one line. But I will not say uh, anything about it, and I will just click it. Thank you for your attention.